Fred Paso here today for his retinal surgery follow-up. These retina guys are always saying the retina looks perfect. Here is the retina specialist extraordinaire showing pictures of before and after the retinal surgery. Clearly he's satisfied with his work. Look at him, he gets the biscuits from the soccer coach. He's out the door in one happy retina surgery. Fred's now here for his cataract consult. He has a lot of astigmatism in that eye and has to match to the other eye of minus four. Fred is being told at this visit 2% risk of integrity of the capsular bag is weaker from retina surgery. He is not happy about hearing this. The chance of a second surgery is 2% and he needs to decide if he wants a toric IOL. Up, oh, he made his decision. It's torque to that left eye. Go a minus two. Let's see where this leads us. This cataract surgery has just begun. Well, the decision has been made to visco dissect because any hydro dissection could further put pressure on the posterior capsule. Clearly concerned about that ring with prior retina surgery, maybe a nick in the capsule. This red reflex is not looking good. Oh, uh, let's put some chalk on this, Olivia. If we get yellow, you can see we're outlining that hydration ring, but then that blue is just showing. Clearly, there's a red reflex that's too much. So now we're switching over to the eponuclear settings. All movement pull away from suspected rent. Yeah, you just want to stay away from anything falling down that rent. We have no idea how big it is. More and more red reflexes coming out. We don't see any vitreous forward, but the patient had a vitrectomy with that prior retina surgery. With most of the lens removed, there's a large opening in the posterior capsule. Zooming in will give us a better look. Yeah, Olivia, once again, now that we know this, it's time to take out that second instrument. I would be really aggressive trying to manipulate the lens into the phaco tip rather than reaching and pulling. You really just want to do everything you can to minimize any pressure on that posterior capsule. So here we are using that second instrument to gently move lens pieces into the phaco tip. Then when you come out of the eye, of course, you want to keep that chamber stable so the rent doesn't extend. And I always like when the surgeon waits till the very end to go near the high risk area to remove any remaining cortex. Keep that cortex in that tip. Don't let go or it might fall deeper into the eye. See that PC haze? Just leave it. This is not a time to polish. Just look at the size of the posterior capsule rent. There's no way an IOL can go into that bag. Sometimes a case is not going just routine and boring, and you have to shift gears. I always found you have to take some time and sit back and think about things for a moment and decide what's the next best strategy before you just bulldoze your way through the case. Okay, so as the surgeon sits back, it's critical decision point. On the one hand, he could just play it safe and be conservative. For this situation, we can place a three-piece monofocal IOL in the sulcus. Don't worry about the two diopters of astigmatism. He can wear glasses for the next 30 years. Well, on the other hand, he could take a chance and be a little more aggressive. For this scenario, a toric IOL can be placed and should hold on an axis if placed as a reverse optic capture since 6 millimeter optic and 5 millimeter capsulotomy. Even if it's a 50% chance, why not take it? You can always cut the lens out and put a monofocal in the sulcus. There's two diopters he'll correct for the next 40 years. This is a big decision for the surgeon. What a sad dilemma for Fred. Here comes the big reveal. Yeah, Olivia, we just can't tell yet what the surgeon chose. As the lens unfolds, let's zoom in and get a closer look. Yup, there it is. I see the toric dots. With these torics, as you know, these toric haptics must be in the capsular bag. Yeah, I can see that, Olivia, and it is in the bag, and the Sinsky hook is just ever so gently lifting up to get that reverse optic capture. There's the interoperative aberometry, making sure that toric is in a great position. So here we have the INA probe under the IOL to stabilize and remove the OVD. That's right, Olivia. Better use extremely low vacuum so you don't get any extension of that rent or too much movement of the IOL. Get some BSS in there while you're taking out the probe to keep that chamber from trampolining. Look how tight the anterior capsule is almost choking the optic to keep it stabilized and centered with the haptics in the bag. Yeah, that's a nice position. 
I bet that's one happy surgeon who just got the thumbs up and he's heading out of the OR. Up, another heel click and another happy situation. Right, and here we are back to our patient Fred Paso. Let's see how his recovery is going. Olivia, he's got that coffee in the hand. That's pretty much expected from this guy. Everyone's patiently waiting. He looks pretty happy about the surgery. Oh, he's got biscuits to hand off to the scrub tech. There's a happy scrub tech. Here we are, post-op day one. Pressure looks good. And the IOL is in the perfect position. Yeah, Olivia, but what's that vision? Well, it just came in. Uncorrected near J1. What a great start and an early win for the patient. Here we are, the three-month dilated consult. And you can see as we go into the slit lamp that that IOL stayed centered and the torque is in alignment. You can also appreciate that capsule is really tight against that optic. You can just tell the patient is ecstatic about this console. I bet I'll get a heel click out of this one. Oh, there oh, it is. Oh, there it is. <laughs>